situation. We have a power cut, but we've got solar installed. It's a lovely sunny day. Should be absolutely fine, right? Wrong, because sadly, most inverters are like this one here, which is a normal ENA G98 and G99 compliant inverter. That stipulates within those documents that all inverters have to have an anti-islanding mode. If there is any instability in the grid, any power cuts, power fluctuations in voltages, things like that, this thing has to switch off. So actually your solar will not work in an off-grid scenario. That's where we come in. We are OI Electrical. OI is the Norwegian word for island. We specialize in island mode power, basically taking your existing systems and putting them off-grid. Let's get into the episode. Now you might be wondering, why is it important that we have the option to go off-grid? Honest answer, it's not important. Get your board games out, get some candles out, read a book, talk to the people around you. But whatever you do, do not play Monopoly if you want to have friends when the power comes back on again. Stupid bloody <laughs> Now, this big metal pipe here is one of the reasons why it's very important that this customer keeps power at the property no matter what. Some customers might have medical fridges. This customer has a big back boiler, which if it's running when the power cuts and he is not home, that thing is gonna blow up. You're gonna have your main supply cable here coming into your property. This goes up and into the main head and out of the main head off and into your meter. So we need to make sure that when there's a power cut, if we're gonna keep using the rest of our power, we wanna make sure that we disconnect from the grid. We wanna completely cut off from that. And that means also we can't use their earth. So we need to make sure we have our own earthing system and we want to make sure that we have a function that will enable us to cut off and automatically transfer over to battery power and generator power. So we do that with something called an ATS or in this instance, a gateway. I don't know if you've noticed this James, but I'm a Leatherman guy now. You don't just have a Leatherman, it's kind of a personality, isn't it? You've got a hold in your crack. We're gonna have to blur that out now. Now this is not sponsored, I promise you, I've not been paid. I've not even had a discount on this thing. I've paid full price. There's lots of different solutions that will work just as well as this. You can go down the route of Victron, go down the route of Tesla Powell. To be honest, I'm not really that sold by that, but this one I think is the perfect fit for this property. So you have the option to run a generator through it, your own inverter, old inverter, EV, we're gonna talk you through the whole thing. So mounting this ATS was pretty ridiculously easy. I'm used to doing old school generators ATSs, which are massive transfer switches. They're a pain, they're complicated. This thing literally mounted onto two hooks on the wall and that was it. And apart from getting punched in the face, oh. before long she was on, mounted, tightened up and ready to go. Today's sponsor is probably one of the most relevant and helpful that we have ever had on this channel. I actually reached out to them to see if they'd be interested in supporting Oil Electrical and they said yes. And that is because I'm always getting asked how I produce this sort of documentation. It's beautiful. Any sort of solar design, battery design, handover packs, line drawings for solar or renewables, I use it, Pylon Observer. It's unbelievably good software and it's not just a solar and battery design tool. It produces amazing sales pitches that you can send to your customers. It really is the complete package and you can try it risk-free, link down below. Thank you so much to Pylon Observer for supporting this video. Right, so as you can see, there is a whole array of uh, contactors, switches, controls, breakers on this side, but we'll come to this later as we wire up every stage of this. First, let's go start the battery on the other side. So with the ATS on a mounted, we thought we'd crack on with the battery storage side of things. So that ATS basically, the gateway is gonna monitor the solar, monitor all of the house loads, and that is gonna control the charging and discharging of that battery. So we have to start off with the base, but before we could do that, something more important cropped up. It's lunchtime. Today's a day of firsts for James. Not only is it his first off-grid battery system, this is his first ever Five Guys. Food is very important to us here at Oil Electrical. Now, I know we're not a food blogging channel, so we won't go into too much depth on the food, but I do want to share James's glowing review. Mm. Right, so now back to work. So, we have to bolt this base down to the floor because we're going for a floor mounted battery option. All the batteries stack up on top of each other. The inverter at the top will be bolted to the wall, but it's important that you screw the mount down to the floor. So we're doing that with proper concrete anchors. Now I get to use one of my favorite tools, this FIFW12, this bad boy, man. It was on sale in CEF at the trade counter and I bought it as an impulse buy. Got zero regrets. We have these concrete bolts in. 
Got the holes drilled. Now, Michael, you might know him as Indiana Jones, said to us, whatever you do, don't use the fixings that come with this battery because they are rubbish. And I said, Michael, I think I've used a concrete bolt quite a few times. But unfortunately, he was completely right. If these don't go in, we cry. We cry. And we probably have to just grind them off. I don't know what it was about these bolts that just made them not want to go in, but they just wouldn't shed their skin. Michael's words are ringing in my ears. They wouldn't tighten up properly and they would spin, so it was a real pain in the bum. So after some finessing with the hammer... Oh gosh, that's a horrible one. It was all good, no tears, it's all looking good, we're tight, we're bolted down to the floor. That's worked quite well, I wonder what Michael was whinging about. Each of those battery modules that we're looking in there is equal to eight kilowatt hours of storage. The more you stack up, I believe you can go up to six on this battery system, the more storage you're gonna get. Very nice, very easy, and good for retrofitting as well. While we've been doing that, Michael has been very kindly running off all of the cables and installing the earth rod. When you're going off grid, you cannot use the supply earth from the DNO. You have to provide your own earthing. So while they're running the cables across, I'm going to get all of the AC side of things done, get the isolator mounted up, get the batteries set up, ready to power on. We've opted for a black Skarme isolator here because genuinely, in my opinion, that is just the best one in the industry. I've not seen one that's better. I've not found one that's better if i'm wrong please comment it below i would love to be proved wrong because i always like to find new exciting products just to add to that as well if you're watching this and you see something that you've got any questions about or would even like us to cover something else in future videos we absolutely love the comments that you guys leave we appreciate the feedback and it helps us to make better videos so please do feel free to comment below with requests that you have for future videos or future topics Let's work on Mike. <laughs> He's been off at another job, give me a hand. Got another job running in Fleet. With every solar install or some battery installs, you have to get the DNO involved. So the DNO is the distribution network operator, like National Grid, SSE, whoever it is. We had a very confusing meeting with them yesterday. So we'd installed a Tesla Powerwall, which to be honest, I'm not. I'm not a massive fan of. This power wall that we'd installed, we'd applied for an export of IOG 99. We'd applied for 11 kilowatts, yeah, which is the maximum that the inverter can actually handle. But the chap came for a witness test from SSE. We're a bit perplexed to why we needed a witness test in the first place, because we'd applied for the maximum that it can handle and that had been approved. But when he got there, he said there was a four kilowatt limit. Anyway, that was a, that was a lot of hassle, but they ended up letting us have it and backing down it was just an admin error on their end so as we discussed earlier the power comes into the building there through the main head through the meter up and into this main switch here so this is the standard typical setup we want that to change we want tails out of that meter into here so this is the input for our gateway or ATS or whatever you want to call it and then the house load will come off of that back up and into this and then we'll have all the separate wiring to do afterwards but that's the main function of it so then the house load is on an uninterruptible supply whether that be generator battery solar all of that will be managed by this smart gateway that we're fitting here so first things first while we're here working i'm going to replace these tails because they're a bit cruddy and old and not really the correct size for the main fuse so remember complacency killed the cat we're dead check against a known source we're dead great now, some of you are inevitably going to be wondering, why haven't you changed that consumer unit? You know, oh, there's a few non-conformities in there, it's messy, it's BG, blah, 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 blah. Here's the thing, guys. When you're hired in as an electrician to do your job, it's very important to pick your battles. You want to make sure that you leave the customer with a good job that is safe and you want to be reasonable. I always try to have the principle... I might not be able to fix everything here, but I want the customer to be left safer than how I found him. So however bad the install is, I'm going to leave it a little bit safer, even if that is not technically my contracted job to do. Most regs are not retrospective, other than a few that we're not going to go into right now. You can't cast a modern brush on past installations. You have to be fair and sometimes set aside your OCD a little bit to give a good job to the customer while being reasonable. Why? Why? Do significant others insist on asking how long a job will take or when you'll be home? I, <laughs> my honest answer is I have absolutely no idea. On this occasion, I caved and said I'll be home at three o'clock. It's four o'clock and I'm at least two hours from home. And I don't know if you've noticed, 
This isn't quite wired yet. You might think this is a bit unusual that I'm going to talk up the whole board because I've only touched the main switch, but I think if you're inside of a board, connections get loose over time. That's why we maintain things. That's why we have EICRs and stuff. And I just think if you were the last person to touch a board, there's nothing about the legalities of it. Imagine how awful you'd feel if there was a fire and there was a loose connection. And then you found out, oh, I was the last person on that board. I don't think talking, to be honest, is essential. I don't think it's the answer to everything. But what I will say is sometimes it's more so that when you sleep at night, thinking, oh, did I tighten up that MCB? You go, I know I did because I'm in a habit. I have a habit of waiting for the click and then I know I'm good. Let the manufacturer take the seat of blame, not you, my humble sparky friends. They do need to make a mechanical one of these. Cool, another install safer than how we found it. Okay, so we are wired up. Let me show you what we have. This port here is our smart port, so we can use that for generators. It also has a two wire connection there as well, but in this instance, we're using it for our third party inverter. So it goes down to this RCBO here, connects up to an inverter. These three ports here are for the Siege Energy inverters, so they will communicate with that. And then this is the house connection. So this is the actual backup circuits for the whole house. So basically this box here is gonna handle the changeover and everything. So we'll get it set up, we're gonna get it commissioned, and then I'll show you it. We're gonna test it out. We're gonna switch the grid off and see if we can power up his house off grid from his existing solar inverter. All right, it is the moment of truth. So we're all commissioned, we're up and running on the app. I'm gonna switch off from the grid. So when we go off grid here, I don't wanna just see all of the lighting and everything still running. I wanna make sure that our existing Fit Tariff solar install is still running because that's the key thing that we wanna get from this video. So we switch it, we're gonna hear the contactors here click out. There we go. Lights didn't even flicker and solar still running, mate. That's pretty cool. All right, so let's get the grid on, leave that about 20 seconds, and then the contact will pull back in. There we have it. We are running off grid. The sun is charging us up off grid with a third party inverter. So if you have net metering and you want battery storage, you want to function off grid, whatever your reasons might be, but you don't want to have to splash the cash on a whole new inverter, a whole new electrical system, you don't need to. Give us a call. We'll be happy to help you out. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time.